Mr. Whitnick. He is about to enter one of the most viciously contested regions in all of South Vietnam. Located along the Laotian border, the heavily jungled Aw Shaw Valley is one of the NVA's most valuable base areas in South Vietnam. It serves as a funnel for soldiers and supplies coming off the Ho Chi Minh Trail. A week earlier, a 400-man battalion of U.S. soldiers discovered 1,500 NVA dug into Hill 937, less than a mile from the border. They've been locked in intense combat ever since and are in desperate need of reinforcements to take the hill. Right away, the supply sergeant starts shoving tons of ammo at us. We're told to double up on everything. Instead of 200 rounds of M16, take 400. Instead of 50 rounds of M60, take 100. Jesus, we really must be heading into something big. I'm trying to keep it together. But you know, I've never been in major combat before. I mean, aside from training, I barely even fired my weapon. I don't know what I'm gonna do, other than just go in my gut and pray that it all works out. Here, everything looks eerily picturesque. Kind of reminds me of Vermont. But I know better than that. Vietnam sure as hell is not Vermont. Sergeant Arthur Wicknick and his company are en route to Hill 937 to reinforce U.S. troops who have been trying to dislodge the NVA for the past week. The hill is located along one of the many enemy pathways into the south. U.S. forces are attempting to cut them off. When I glance around at the other guys' faces, they're all staring straight ahead. As we settle in, I can hear these Vietnamese voices ringing out from the top of that hill. Now, nobody knows what they're saying, but the message is clear. They want us to know that they're there, and they're waiting for us. As Wicknick and his company prepare for their assault up Hill 937, 15 miles to the west, American pilots are attempting to stop enemy advances into the south by going straight to the source of the problem, the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Although diplomatic policy prohibits U.S. ground troops from entering Laos and Cambodia, where the vast majority of the trail is located, U.S. aircraft are not restricted from bombing. bombing, enemy movements along the Ho Chi Minh Trail prove impossible to stop. With more than 6,000 miles of paths, the NVA simply reroute themselves around damaged areas, 
while a crew of 100,000 North Vietnamese laborers work round the clock on maintenance and repair. The result is that enemy forces are able to move nearly 10,000 tons of supplies every month, forcing U.S. ground troops to try to stop them in an inhospitable landscape of endless jungle-covered hills. Between the monsoon rain and the unbearable humidity, everyone's constantly soaked. It's bad enough we've already lost half a dozen men to the NBA. Now we're starting to lose them to jungle rot. Though after being stranded out here for three days, I suppose a little bad weather is the least of our problems. 23-year-old Marine Lieutenant Carl Marlantis is on Hill 400, 65 miles north of Arthur Wicknick. Three days earlier, he and his company of 170 Marines set out to stop what they believed to be a group of 100 NVA crossing into the south via the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Instead, they stumbled into the path of an entire enemy regiment, numbering nearly 2,500. here, in the middle of all this shit, it's hard to believe that just over a year ago I was at Oxford. I was only there about five or six weeks before I was feeling guilty. And now I'm stuck out here on some godforsaken hill. Another company's a few miles away, but the NBA have us surrounded. They're hitting us with mortars and mortars all the time. We run out of water. Uh, even though it was a monsoon and so we were trying to catch the fog in, in our ponchos and, and licking our ponchos to try and, you know, so we were in a desperate strait. And we had about eight seconds of machine gun ammo left for each, and we divided everything evenly. We just divided everything evenly. And uh, I remember just uh, looking at a little patch of... For the first time in days, we can actually see clear skies. Uh, Mother Kilo 6, uh, they are uh, off the landing zone. Then the radio crackles to life, telling us the words we've been praying for. Choppers are on their way. <laughs> Marine Lieutenant Carl Marlantis is stranded atop Hill 400, near the Laotian border. After suffering heavy casualties during intense combat with an NVA force, he and his 170-man company have spent the past three days without food or supplies. As the wounded are taken care of, dozens of reinforcements start unloading cases of ammo and sea rations. God, I've never seen so many guys so happy for such a crappy meal. When I'm done eating, I head over to the skipper to get our new orders. But as he starts to speak, my entire body tenses up. Out here for three days without supplies, and now they want us to continue the assault? But the decision's already been made. We attack at dawn. The sun's just peeking up over the horizon. Men whisper quietly to one another. For a moment, it's almost oddly peaceful. And then the order comes down. Fix bayonets. We're gonna kill everyone we see. And if we run out of bullets, we're gonna stab them to death. Come up on my left side so I break right. 
At 8 o'clock, U.S. pilots begin a 30-minute bombardment of Hill 937. At 8.30, every American firebase within range begins 90 minutes of intense preparatory fire. At 10 o'clock, the artillery falls silent, and the ground assault begins. You're thinking you're going to go up in an orderly fashion. But it's just, it's just it not that, that way. way. It's all chaos. It's all shooting. Guys start peeling off in different directions, trying to get away from whatever's happening around them. Over all that noise, you can hear the bullets coming in. It sounds crazy. You can literally hear them hitting the dirt in front of you. And I can't figure out why the hell they're picking on me. And then I realize I never took my stripes off. And I reach, I reach up, up to protect, protect my, my eyes. eyes. Something suddenly hits me in the chest, knocks me backwards. And for a second, all I can think is, this is it. I'm gonna die on a hill out in the middle of nowhere. But then the pain starts getting more intense. There's no way in hell I'll be this lucky again. So I yell at my guys. I want you to follow me. And I took off running. And as I ran, bolts were coming, you know, bolts were nipping at my feet. I just started running up that hill. Jumping over abandoned bunkers, not even paying any attention to what's going on around me. All I know is if I'm gonna survive, I've got to get to the top of that hill. Everybody's flat on the ground, kissing dirt. If we don't find a way to take out those bunkers, we're all gonna end up dead. Marine Lieutenant Carl Marlantis is on Hill 484. Hours earlier, he and his company began an assault against approximately 100 NVA who were dug into the hill. I holler at one of my gunners, but out of the corner of my eye, I see all my guys, just seconds behind me. And when we get to the bunkers, everyone opens up. Just seconds behind me, and we hit those bunkers, and... from my platoon died taking Hill 484. And every one of them was a friend. I'm hunkered down, bracing for the next wave of gunfire. But it's strangely calm. All I hear is some rifle shots and a few hand grenades off in the distance. And then I see someone coming up, and he flashes me the peace sign. And then I realize that's my guys coming up the hill. On May 20th, 1969, after 10 days of brutal fighting, U.S. forces successfully secure Hill 937. 
the cost to the U.S., 70 American soldiers killed and 372 wounded. The cost to the enemy, more than 600 killed. Although U.S. forces win the hill and the battle of the body count, the majority of the 1,500 North Vietnamese originally spotted on Hill 937 escape into Laos. <laughs> 